So as you say, you're losing 15 degrees from the compressor here and the high pressure tank. So yeah, so that that's an inefficiency in, in the system. Absolutely, absolutely. So one of the ways to to circumvent this is to come up with this parallel compressor. And of course, you have to you have to follow the wires here. But once we reach a certain stage, we we can set in this controller that when this valve here has been open for a certain uh, opening degree for a certain amount of time. Okay. That's when it's time to switch to the IT compressor. Okay. Because at that point, the IT compressor has the right capacity to take over from the valve. Okay. Uh, so that means that the valve basically closes and we start up this compressor. And if you follow the lines here, this compressor yeah. is directly connected to the receiver. Okay, yeah. So basically, that means that the suction temperature, suction pressure of this compressor is the same pressure as the receiver. So this is, let's say, 40 bar. Yep. So that means that the suction pressure of the compressor is also 40 bar. Wow. So that means that the suction pressure on this one is a lot higher yep. than the MT compressors, which increases the COP of your system because this one is running at minus 10. Yep. This one is running at plus five, let's yep. say. So you're increasing the COP dramatically. And that was the first step into bringing CO2 into a warmer climate. Yeah. And we talk, I talk about this all the time, reducing that compression ratio increases the capacity of the system and reduces the power input to do it because now we're shorting in that, that compression ratio or pressure ratio, and now you're doing usable energy. Where before, I just we just talked about it, in those summer months when it's really hot above that transcritical point, you may need 10 compressors, but in the middle of the winter, you only need three. But now with parallel compression or IT uh, compression, that reduces a mitigate. You don't need 10 compressors on your rack anymore. You may need three yeah. with an IT or two IT compressors. Is that Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. So you can either normally this back here in the picture, it's only one, but in real life, it's, yeah. it's more compressors. So you can either um, leave one compressor out because you're running now on an IT, or you can even have, let's say, some smaller compressors. And, the next big thing, of course, after this, we, come, we came with the ejector, which is, uh, okay. we'll talk about that in a minute, I guess. But now what, what the next big thing will be in, in, in one year or so is that we're going to uh, switch compressors from MT to IT. So that in certain periods of the year, you have, let's say, more load on your MT. Okay. And in other parts of the year, when it's warmer outside, you have more load on your IT. And then the logic in the com uh, controller there it can switch one MT compressor, take it away from the MT and put it in the IT. Wow. So you can you can have one, let's say, rotating or okay. cycling compressor. That's so a that, great that's idea. coming. So that's so a, I a little Yeah, I would assume that you would have another line. Oh, it touched it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Should have touched it. That's okay. We'll give it a so I'm, I'm assuming there would be a line from the IT to the medium temp with a ball valve, so you would switch from yeah, the suction and medium that will go into the IT. Yeah, and it, it's not only controls. Of course, you also need a valve yeah, three, to uh, a to, valve. to do that. Absolutely. So, um, talking about the ejector, yeah, let's talk about th the that ejector. was basically the the next step into bringing um, CO two into warmer climates because the the whole issue is your empty pack. That's yeah. the one that's most loaded, and that's the one that we have to protect basically. Yep. Um, so we have to make life for the empty pack easier basically yeah. that's and and um, getting in the IT compressors that's one step of making that the, the empty pack uh, yeah. life a little bit easier and the next big thing was um, the, 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 the ejector and this is um, another thing just to um, take away uh, some of the gas and we can we can go back to the picture now that you, okay. you stop touching it by yeah, the way yeah. <laughs> thank you you're right I should. so here you can see the ejector over here um, if we have the ejector, you can leave out the high pressure valve here because okay. it's basically it's taking over the, the life of the of the, the functionality of the, the high pressure valve because it's doing the same thing. Okay. In, in the end, it is a nice shiny um, <laughs> high pressure valve. Um, so we, ha we have ejectors inside. You can see six solenoids valves here. So that means that there are six ejectors below this in different capacities, okay. small to big. Okay. Um, it, first function of this ejector is high pressure valve so it's maintaining the pressure inside this ejector okay. but also when the pressure goes up uh, so when when in the, the summertime yeah in the summertime really or warm. during heat recovery yeah uh, where we need to push up the pressure 
that's when the, the, the speed through this ejector is so high, and we're talking super, supersonic speeds here, wow. uh, going inside through the, the gas cooler, outside to the receiver, then the pressure here is so high that it starts sucking in through this third port here. And this, okay. this inlet, that's coming in the end from the empty suction. Okay. So that means that we're taking away gas coming from the empty suction and we're, using, we're putting it into the, the high pressure uh, ejector here. Of course, that gas, it doesn't disappear. It, you yeah. need to do something. So that means it going in here, it going into the receiver, but from here it's being handled by the IT compressor. Okay. So where normally this gas would be handled by the MT, yep. now we're taking it away and it's being handled by the IT. Yeah, so that's a really good point because before you'd be using a higher compression ratio, higher pressure ratio with the medium temp. Now we're diverting that gas to do it in the more efficient, yep. high, or lower compression ratio, pressure ratio, and that will boost the efficiency of a system. Yeah, and again, making life for the MT pack easier yep. or even take away another compressor because now you don't need that compressor here because you use it in the IT. Yeah. And of course, that means that on the IT, your your load gets bigger, yep. but that's running on a different pressure. So it has yep. a better COP. And, and once again, we're talking about these technologies for warm ambient or high ambient strategies, but you're not gonna need these in every application. In the Nordic countries, in Canada, we, we don't see parallel compression that much, but when you start to get in the warmer climate, it's like uh, in the Southern parts of the US or in, Spain and all that, uh, South Africa, Australia, you're gonna start to see parallel compression, ejectors, adiabatic, depending on the climate. So this is why it's important to understand all these different technologies, because when you're working with your customers, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're providing them the right technology. It's pretty yeah. important, right? And let's not forget, we're, we're, you're right about the high ambient, but if we're running with heat recovery, oh, that's a good that, point. that also means that you have to push up your pressures in order to get that heat out and yeah. to, to warm up that, that water that's over here. So if we run heat recovery, that means we're pushing up the pressure. Yeah. So even in cold climates, okay, that would mean that you still need an ejector awesome. to make your system run more efficient. And as heat recovery and, and heat reclaim is getting more and more yeah. into, the, into the world, so even supermarkets, you now have to heat with the, the cooling system, yeah. right? So it's getting more and more normal, let's say. Yeah. So I love it. I see. I'm still learning. I'm always learning. This is what's so good about coming to events like this, meeting experts and learning about this. So let's talk about heat recovery. That's something that I've done a lot in the supermarket space with HFCs and stuff. So we would always divert to discharge gas into either potable water and water or air, you know, cooling, uh, heating the air. What's different about CO2 uh, doing heat recovery compared to doing like heat reclaim with an HFC refrigerator? Uh, the, the thing is, it, it, is the, it is so easy to do with the CO2 because it has so much heat inside, basically. Wow. It's so easy to do it. And probably is one of the best refrigerants around to do heat recovery. It's so easy. And in the, in the beginning, we only had in the, in the discharge here, the only thing we could do is just mount a valve here and have uh, a heat exchanger behind. Yep. And that was it, that was all we could do. But now we also have uh, what we call an HRU, so a heat okay. recovery unit. So the picture you see here, that's now something, uh, and that's behind the camera, so you can't well, see, we'll take a look at but that we, can, we can walk around in a second. So now we are also able to supply this complete unit on a frame with some, some uh, control logic inside. So um, now we have the complete package that we can offer. So we have a, a controller inside telling the pack controller how much heat it needs because we have two vessels up here yeah. and we need to heat up the water that's inside. So when the temperature is too low, the controller inside sends a, a signal to this pack controller saying, I need more heat. Yeah. And that means that the pack controller, it will push up the pressure here in order to get the heat up there. Yeah. And so now this is where the advantage of the ejector comes in because if you're in the middle of uh, the winter time, and then all of a sudden you need heat, you gotta push that pressure up real high so you get the heat out of the CO2. Yeah. But now with the ejectors in there, you're not using the MT compressors for all that, you're diverting that to the parallel compression, which has a lower pressure ratio, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Wow. And you can do the heat recovery without the IT, of okay. course. But once you have the high pressure ejector, you need the IT compressors in order to have, yeah. uh, to have that running correctly. 
We also have a low pressure ejector. That's a little bit different because it looks exactly the same. Uh, but in that case, um, the, the whole idea is that the low pressure ejector is taking the full load from, from the MT. So that basically it works as it were an, an IT compressor. So that's a little bit different beast, but yeah. if you have a high pressure ejector, you need the IT compressor. Okay, absolutely. Great. Awesome. Let's take a look over at the heat recovery unit and maybe explain a little bit about that. Sure. Hey, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you got something out of it, something that you can use in your daily life. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, and click the bell button because when you do click the bell button, it will notify you anytime new videos are released. Also, check out the Refrigeration Mentor webpage at refrigerationmentor.com where I'll have all the different trainings, upcoming events, the different podcasts I've been on, as well as the Refrigeration Mentor podcast. If you want to check that out on Apple, Spotify, Google, any service provider of your choice. Super excited to see you at the next video. Now let's get a conversation going.